Hey guys, good Marks Goods here, and today I just wanted to show you all a couple of the eclectic pieces of uh, antique silver plate that I've acquired over the past week. It is a random assortment of stuff, and I'm fairly certain that some of it is worth a bit of money, and some of it is not. So first of all, I'll show you all this. It's just a quick little best wishes. Obviously, it is a napkin ring, a wishbone figural napkin ring, and we've got the Wilcox Company quadruple pleated. Y'all should know that Wilcox was folded into the International Soap Company, so you still see their name a lot. All right. Best wishes, you all. Have a great year. Have a great rest of the year. And have a great next year. I don't usually focus on pewter, and I don't usually decide to show pewter on the channel, but this one, this piece is very strange. I didn't know what the heck it was until I used the, the marking on the the piece that says somewhere on it, it's ten, it's ten ninety five. Why do you guys use a wine funnel in the first place? I don't know anything about wine. I drink seven dollar wine. That's what I do. I have it. I pour it in my silver cup, and I'm gonna show y'all my my silver cup over here. It's actually a nine hundred silver cup. It's marked Arsueza. And I found it over a year ago, and I still have this cup. I drink from it all the time. One of my favorite pieces I've ever found. It's old, too. I don't know anything about the maker, other than he was an actual old silversmith that worked a long time ago. Yeah, John John Guerrero, dear. It's kind of hard to make that, that out. And people are trying to sell his funnel for about 30 to $40. Um, usually all of these on the lookout for more hotel plate, hotel silver. This one, it's marked R. Wallace. Wallace, hard soldered actually, just Wallace. It says Kentucky Hotel. Oh, uh, which hotel in Kentucky that is? I can't really figure out too fast. Hopefully it's worth something. This one is hard to make out. But I do believe that it, oh, it's, first of all, it's by Gorham. The date is, it says, I think that's a date mark. It says 87, but it could be wrong. And this is the date mark right here, the little bird figure. Yeah, it's probably the bird symbol. That'll probably show us the date. And it says, it says Morton Hotel, I think. It's very hard to see because this, this piece is so faded out. It's so faded, I think that that really hurts the value of this piece. So I decided to ask Reddit. And I thought, well, what better subreddit to ask about a historical piece of a silver plate other than the subreddit San Francisco. One of the people who replied is probably would have said, Hospital. That is our mystery word, Morton Hospital. And then another poster finds information on Morton Hospital. He actually found an advertisement from a newspaper that dated to 1923, and it said something along the lines of a uh, cure for can cancer treatment with radium and diabetes treatment, and they were and also surgeries. These pieces are so weird. I don't know what to make of these because they're, they're really off the wall in terms of design. But part of me thinks that it's old and part of me thinks it's not really and this is like modern or postmodern art. I don't think about postmodernism guys. I usually stay a little bit earlier than that but it kind of Kind of modernish to me. I don't know. Maybe you guys will see something different. I can kind of 
see an argument to, towards Art Deco, but it looks a little funny for an Art Deco piece. I got this really, really badly tarnished nickel silver cocktail shaker. It was made by a company called Heckworth. Never heard of them. In this condition, it's not going to be worth much. I'd like to see if I can posture it up, maybe bring out a little bit of pop from it, but at this point, it, it probably no matter what I do, it's not worth that much. To get 20 out of it, maybe it would sell for 15 to 20, just as a, a novelty. Uh, and now here's for the, the more interesting pieces I thought were relatively cool, a basket and the maker. I didn't have a maker. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Kind of complicated. Again, I don't know if that makes it valuable or just treat it like any other basket, which is really hard to sell. A mystery basket. This was made from, you know, kind of weird country that I don't really find anything from. But this is Art Deco. I, I do believe it, it is Art Deco. The overall oh, form. It, it appears to be raspberries, I would think. Raspberry basket, you don't see that every day. And here we've got the name. The name is right here. Let me look it up again. It's been a minute and I forgot the name already. The Zandrick. And it was made in Austria, Hungary, slash Czechoslovakia. Oh, there's a lot of history behind the piece. Just, I'm looking at ASCAS online, which is the Association of, of Small Collectors of Antique Silver. Probably early modern, early 1900s, somewhere along that line. Yeah, unfortunately there is a little bit of brass showing. Well, actually a lot of brass showing, but it's still plenty beautiful. And it's not like the brass is ugly, which kind of, it helps a lot actually with silver plate. If, if say you have a piece that's showing plate loss and it's horrendous and horrible looking, that's going to affect the value worse than if the base metal looks kind of pleasant and, and the piece still works and, and functions as a presentable piece. And I think that it does. So the the value loss to collectors is a little bit less than if it were uglier, in uglier shape. I think it's still in good working shape, just over the years. I'm no doubt that it's been polished, perhaps, to uh, show this plate thinning. And people do want a good deal of money for Zandrick pieces. Yeah, usually couple hundred that doesn't necessarily mean that it sells but at least people are putting some kind of value into um, Sandrick Art Deco. Now we've got this piece was made by Wilcox Silver Plate Company. Again, it's quadruple plated just like the same maker as our friend The Best Wishes napkin ring, but you all can see it's, it's really it's quite a stunning piece and it's in great shape, more, better shape than I usually get for my antique pieces. It is personalized, there isn't quite a, quite a name here, I'm looking at what could be a Y, M, Y, C, M? That's what I read? I don't know, monograms are kind of a little confusing. You can argue that there is a... Dang. Yeah, I don't know how people re used to read this. So, like a lost art. Definitely a lost art to me. Why? P? Is it a P? Why PCM? <sighs> I don't know, dude. But it is in great condition. Intact plating. Honestly, guys, it looks like it was just sitting on somebody's shelf or mantle for decades. It's very, very gorgeous. I would want at least 100 for this. Perhaps more. I loved old silver plate. 
back in the day when these these companies were were manufacturing pieces, they would um, sometimes do something very experimental. Like the handle, the form. It's kind of not seen too much. This elongated handle like that instead of just being carved and normal. I've seen this company do this before, like a strip on the bottom with with birds and flowers. But it is a great representation of that. Yeah. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed looking through this week's finds. I'm going to spend the rest of the day inventorying, uh, taking pictures, and wrapping them up for a sale in the store. So I'll be busy. Thanks guys for watching.